is more careful. It's been the leader, it was the leader for four or five years of the non-aligned movement. It does not aspire to join any or align with any bloc, neither with Russia nor with Iran nor with the West. Uh, and so I understand why in Azerbaijan people are upset that the US and the EU are now saying, okay, Armenia, you can, you can come our way, but Azerbaijan has decided to stay on its own. So it's actually, Azerbaijan is getting what it wants. It's being respected as a good partner of the European Union, as you said, respected as an independent, non-aligned country. Uh, and as long as it has a peace treaty with Armenia, and Armenia can't threaten Azerbaijan militarily, and as long as Armenia finally implements its pledges to open up all the transport corridors linking Armenia with Azerbaijan and Armenia with Turkey, uh, Azerbaijan should be happy. And, and I think it will be uh, once there's a peace treaty uh, and once there's a, a border agreement uh, de defining the border between yeah, the two countries. One of the main things are now is Zengizor Corridor. Yeah, it's one, one of the corridors, yeah. Yeah, and it, and it needs to happen. I think it will. I, I think- You believe it's gonna happen? Yeah. Because Armenia, besides Iran, I mean, they're just resisting this not to happen. Yeah, well, Pashinyan is not resisting it, but his political opponents are. And he's opposed by the so-called Karabakh clan, former leaders from Karabakh. Uh, as well as nationalists and the, you know, the Dashnak Situn, so uh, so-called Armenian Revolutionary Front, who want conflict with Azerbaijan. They, they benefit personally, either through money or political support, as long as the conflict with Azerbaijan is unresolved. Some of them want to create, recreate uh, the medieval state of greater Armenia, which means taking territory from Eastern Turkey, from Azerbaijan, from Iran. Uh, I think that's crazy. But some of them really want to do that. Uh, and some of them, again, are just opportunistic and they, they get money from emotional members of the diasporas, whether it be in Russia or France or the United States, who think, yes, we need to resurrect that great old medieval homeland of Armenia. Um, clearly, those, those revanchist forces in Armenia uh, are not gone. They're still there, but they're weaker and weaker with every day. Okay, we're up at the, the last, last question sure. about Georgia. So um, do you think the EU is opening doors to Georgia? Mm -hmm. Because now they were given uh, the candidacy mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, status yeah. as being membership. I mean, I, I talked to Toivo Klar, actually. He's uh, yep, yep, yep. Uh, the special representative yep. for Georgia uh, in the- uh, For the South Caucasus uh, in general. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. South Caucasus. Caucasus and, crisis in Georgia, actually, mm. this is a side mm. Mm. But uh, he, say, he says that this is uh, not really going to happen in the near future. So um, but what is your take? I mean, yeah, there's, there's Georgia no is also in between, you know, between the being a post-Soviet country and uh, a European country. Mm -hmm. So yeah, Georgia was a vibrant democracy before 2012. Um, and it clearly had chosen the Western path. It wanted to be a member of NATO, wanted to be a member of the European Union. And the population overwhelmingly, over 85% of the population of Georgia still wants those two things. But its current government does not want those things. Its current government wants to have strong relations with Russia. It's therefore canceled some big infrastructure projects that would have helped Georgia integrate with, with Europe whether it be the Anaklia port in Western Georgia or the uh, uh, Caucasus Online uh, internet service provider privatization. Um, <clears throat> both projects would have helped Georgia, again, connect its economy in many different ways with that of the European Union. And so uh, when a year or so ago, when Ukraine and Moldova were offered EU candidacy status, Georgia was not. Uh, and that's because of deep dysfunctionality in Georgia's political system. Um, and then the Georgian government made some pledges to enact some reforms, and the, then the European Union said, okay, okay, now you can be a candidate. But now, the, the main th issue that the G Georgian government agreed to uh, accept, which was not to have, uh, or not to move forward, uh, a Russia's style of uh, uh, agent registration rule, is back on the political agenda. So now the, the Georgian government has said, we promised the EU we wouldn't do this. We're gonna do it anyway. We're gonna push forward this Foreign Agents Registration Act. So the European spokespersons have now come out, even Charles Michel uh, in recent days saying, Georgia can't possibly uh, be on a European path if it's going to take steps like this. So I think it's derailed again, the, the Georgian aspirations, which the population overwhelmingly wants to join the European Union, 
is derailed for now, and there's, there's a political stalemate in Georgia. So as far as I guess, now Georgia is going to be uh, going through the process where Turkey is going through in mm. the past four decades. Um, what do so you mean? just pending. Ah, pending. Yeah, but it's different. I mean, I think uh, there are a lot of uh, European leaders who, who don't think Turkey should ever be a member of the European Union because of their anti-Turkic feeling. I mean, it was Giscard d'Estaing, former leader of France, who said famously in late 70s, early 80s, he said the, the European Union is a, is a Judeo-Christian organization. Yes, it's yeah? a Christian club. Christian say. club, yeah. yeah. Georgia doesn't have that problem, right? And, and, and Georgia is much less known. The, the, I, I think there is strong general support for Georgia to, to become closer to the European Union, within the European Union, I mean. What's more controversial is Georgia's membership in NATO, uh, with Germany having historically been opposed to that because Germany is afraid of Russia. Okay. And Germany is such a double standard. They, they say, well, we don't want a country that has a territorial dispute with, with Russia becoming a member of NATO because that could bring yes. NATO into conflict with Russia. But Germany itself had a territorial dispute with Russia when it became a NATO member. It was called East Germany, <laughs> which was occupied by Russian military forces. So That's bizarre. It is bizarre. Oh, yeah, mm. okay. Um, Ambassador Matthew Breiser, thank you very much you, for joining my program. It was a great talk. It was really insightful. Uh, I'm sure our audience will have some ideas which they agree and disagree. So um, good for them. <laughs> çok teşekkürler izlediğiniz için çok keyifli bir sohbet oldu. E, emekli büyükelçi Matthew Breiser ile konuştuk. E, Kafkaslardan Orta Doğu'ya İsrail İran meselesinden Türkiye ABD ilişkilerini pek çok başlığı ele almaya çalıştık. Çok teşekkürler izlediğiniz için. Hoşçakalın.